right. I guess first of all, um, thank you everybody for coming who's here. And we also have a couple of participants on Zoom uh, online. So if uh, anybody has any questions, try to keep this somewhat informal as we go through um, the presentation. There is sign-in sheets by both doors here and also comment cards. So if you have specific comments uh, about your property or something you see, please fill those out and you can leave them just on the table there. Or if you wanna bring them up here and just make a pile, um, that way we can make sure we're addressing um, any concerns, questions everybody has. Um, I guess just kind of go through the meeting. Um, I guess start with introductions. So I myself am uh, Michael Wadolski, the Director of Public Works for the Village of Weston. Um, I guess here with me is Josh Swenson, the utility superintendent. Um, our deputy director, Dan Rizkowski, has some uh, dental work taken care of today, so he is not able to make it. And then um, I guess our engineering consultant on this project is uh, Isaac Dolan with AECOM. So um, that's the 10th and the uh, village representatives uh, overseeing the design process to date. Um, so the project area that we're talking about is uh, the Crestwood Acres neighborhood, which consists of the streets of Rodney, Rainey, J. Kirk, Douglas, Robin, and uh, East Everest Avenue, which I'm guessing all of you live on. So just a little history of the area. Um, you know, this area was platted in the mid, mid to late 60s. Uh, sewer and water was initially installed around 1969, um, but then the streets getting paved, it appears somewhere in the early to mid 70s. And then, um, in the 80s, it looks like a storm sewer was added on Rodney and then a short section of Douglas uh, in between um, Randy J and uh, Rodney there. So um, just trying to get a feel for how old and when the initial infrastructure was put in. Uh, so and some of you who maybe have uh, lived in that neighborhood for a while may know that in the 2009-2010 timeframe, this project was brought up by the village as a neighborhood reconstruction project. Um, where a design engineering uh, contract was signed in 2010. And then in uh, 2011, the project was uh, dropped. My understanding is there was maybe some uh, resident pushback at the time due to cost of the project. Um, we have changed some things with how the project is um, assessed, which we'll get to later. Um, so if that's a concern for some of you still, um, we'll be going over that in a few minutes here. So, in, you know, 10 years later, essentially, from when the project was first introduced, uh, you know, in 2019, then it was back in the capital improvement plan, and the village board uh, approved the CIP in uh, 2020, which had the Crestwood Acres neighborhood as a 2021 year construction project. Um, so, in the fall of uh, 2020, we had the uh, engineering contract with AECOM signed and. Um, as many of you know, the surveyors were out, there were soil borings done. Uh, so, so that data was collected to help uh, meet DNR requirements and uh, get the preliminary design data together. Um, so one of the questions I know I've gotten is why is the neighborhood selected? Um, you know, a lot of the infrastructure is 50 plus years old. Um, you know, there's poor pavement. Um, there's a lot of drainage issues. We've had water main breaks uh, in recent history and um, just kind of overall, um, the maintenance on the streets is starting to outweigh the ability for it to be cost effective to keep band-aiding and patching it together. Um, you know, there's clay soils, which means there's a lot of freeze thaw cycle, which helps to expedite the, um, the deterioration of the infrastructure. So with pipes, it means pipes end up moving and eventually they move too much and they break and pavement can only flex so much before the cracks turn into potholes and uh, deteriorate um, as well. Um, so just a couple of bad, you know, I can't really see the pictures that well, but, you know, you'll see the edge of the pavements where it's breaking off or on manholes, um, you know, ditches that either have standing water or um, water just kind of cutting a groove through the ditch line or it's um, given way or there's more water distributing now into ditches than historically and there's inadequate uh, size storm sewer to handle that. So as a project as a whole, it's a complete reconstruct, which means a replacement of the water main. Um, you know, the current water main is asbestos cement material that uh, 
Water main typically has a 40 to 60 year uh, survival life. So we're at about 52 years for that pipe. Um, so I guess we can only expect that it's gonna break more and more frequently moving forward. Um, you know, we currently have three broken valves at the intersection of Robin and Douglas. Um, that's likely going to continue as well with uh, more valves breaking. And then it's also a complete replacement of the sanitary sewer mains and uh, sanitary manholes. So making sure that uh, new ones get put in, uh, they can be sealed up so there's less infiltration and inflow from groundwater into the sanitary sewer, which uh, when that comes in there, we end up paying for that water too because it goes to the wastewater treatment plant. So um, the complete reconstruction of the street means new sub base, subgrade. Um, so the taking out some of that clay soil and putting in uh, good sand material and good uh, base course underneath it. So it should provide a much longer pavement life. Um, and then one of the other items is instead of the gravel shoulder, um, a concrete shoulder would be put in. So it uh, doesn't end up, you know, snow plows aren't gonna be knocking gravel into your ditches anymore. Um, and it kind of helps keep that edge of the pavement uh, supported too so that failure at the edge of the road um, won't happen um, as much. And then uh, for any of you that maybe live on Douglas, uh, where it makes its bends, it's found out that the road isn't centered in the right of way. So in some spots it is south of the middle of the road, other spots it's north of the road. Um, so that'll be kind of straightened out so it's centered within the right of way as well. So um, with the larger plans over there, you can kind of see how, how that will uh, play out. Uh, and then drainage improvements. Um, there'll be storm sewer added to uh, every street in the neighborhood. Um, there'll be a, an in storm sewer inlet uh, in between each set of driveways. So driveway culverts will be removed. Um, you won't need those. So the heaving a lot of people get at the end of their driveway from the culvert pushing up uh, to be eliminated. And um, there'll also be a place then for um, sump pumps. If you have ones that run continuously and discharge, there'll be a place for that to empty into the storm sewer so it actually gets away from your house and doesn't just kind of keep recirculating or sit in the ditch. And um, so it's uh, kind of a couple things there looking at it. Um, so again, you know, can't really see, but uh, with the way the road will be designed, it'll be, you know, come off the road into the ditch and then to a, a catch basin um, to get away from sitting in the side of the road. Um, so then Sidewalk is currently being planned as part of the project. In 2015, the village adopted a, uh, I guess, a complete streets ordinance, which, uh, and also revised the subdivision code. So any new street that is constructed or any um, reconstructed street in a small um, single family lot uh, subdivision or area, um, it does get sidewalk installed on both sides of the road. Um, so that would be a, a new feature, I guess, of the neighborhood. And then also, so, this is a diagram showing, um, there's a bigger one over there, but uh, so the current road section, um, so if this is a house, there's a little bit of a ditch or drainage way, and then a gravel shoulder in the road, uh, it'll be somewhat similar with um, just a sidewalk, a ditch, and then the concrete shoulder, and then the street. So again, uh, you guys can see that. So where it shows up as yellow here is gravel. It'll end up being concrete and then um, sidewalk there where it doesn't exist there. Um, so this is just kind of a talking point. So on the tables back there, this is one that shows kind of the driveway approaches and also the um, trees typically that would be kind of appear to be in conflict with uh, the new construction. On um, these projects, if a tree is cut down, we do um, put a replacement tree in place uh, just behind the right of way, so on your private property. Uh, so if you are losing three trees, the proposal would be to put three trees back. Um, if somebody, oh, quick question, yep. Will they be the same kind of tree? Uh, typically, we try to replace as close as possible. Um, I know sometimes if it's a pine tree that got, gets cut down, people want a uh, like a maple tree planted instead, we've done that too. So um, there's some choice, but uh, not necessarily, you know, an exotic species that we've never found. But, uh, you know, if it's an oak tree, we try to replace it with an oak tree. If it's a maple, maple, elm, elm, um, those types of things. So, uh, 
What? Resistant elm. Yeah, a resistant elm species, correct. Yep. Well, then the other um, sheet that's on those tables back there uh, just gives an outline of where the storm sewer is. So you can kind of see where um, the connection point would be near your property, um, where, where the water would drain to. Have you talked to the residents to see what they want? I guess that's why you guys are here. We're here to see what your feedback is. Um, you know, this project isn't bid and ready to go. It's preliminarily designed. So there's, um, I guess that's why we try to give something for to get feedback off of. So it's not a final design. It's not, you know, the project, you know, there's not a contractor selected yet. It's still in the I guess, design phase. Um, so I guess the examples of what we'd be looking at, oh, question here. Yeah, I think you mentioned some water being a constant fear that it has to be clear water. It can't be gray water. Correct, yeah. It'd be, um, yeah, the groundwater that maybe is settling around the foundation. Right. Yep. So um, with the proposed street design, you uh, drive around to the just east of the Weston School. Um, that neighborhood was reconstructed this past summer. It's a little hard to see with the snow cover, but um, you know, so it has you know the streets with the concrete uh, shoulder, uh, the ditch section, and then sidewalk. Um, so again, you know, the street, uh, a ditch, sidewalk running through it. So. I guess just as an example, other, another one would be the neighborhood uh, behind Pick and Save off of Ross Avenue that has a similar look to it as well. Okay, so here's, um, so in 2010, the special assessment ordinance, um, it included two thirds of the street, 100% of curb and gutter, 100% of the driveway apron, 100% of the sanitary lateral, um, which on an average project was about $7,000 of an assessment. Um, so in 2019, um, the ordinance was rewritten where um, if infrastructure is existing, um, it's, it's not assessed. So since the street is there, um, we no longer assess for the street. Um, curb, we're not putting in curb and gutter because the DNR says you can't because of the stormwater requirements. So um, there's no curb and gutter. Uh, so really the only part of the project that is proposed to be assessed is the driveway apron, which is the section of, um, I guess, your driveway in the public right away. And the reasoning for that is if your house wasn't there, that cost wouldn't exist because there'd be no need to have that apron there. Um, so that in the project that just finished up, the average assessment was about $1,600. Um, those assessments are typically paid back in 10 years of the year following after construction is completed. So if this project is completed in 2021, that first payment would be in 2022. Um, so just, this isn't the special assessment hearing. If this project moves forward to that point, there'll be a, spe a different, a, a second follow-up meeting uh, to go through the special assessments. But um, I guess just, just an FYI, because I know that is a something that many people have questions on is how much is this going to cost me? So, yep. You, you mentioned about what's going to be assessed. Uh, I see in the project it's called for sidewalk. Sidewalks aren't going to be assessed or is the village paying for that? Yeah, correct. Uh, sidewalks aren't assessed for our special assessment ordinance either. So, um, thank you. Correct. Um, so then project schedule. Um, I guess if we keep moving forward as proposed, uh, we'd be looking at uh, bidding the project in April. That's likely when we'd be holding the special assessment hearing. And then, um, you know, bids would come in, we'd be awarding the project to a contractor. They'd likely start in uh, late May, early June, and be looking to finish up by uh, you know, September, October timeframe. So that'd be the proposed schedule, uh, as long as everything stays uh, as planned. If there's changes, it, Things can change as well. So, so what do I do to uh, get the driveway or get the sidewalk fixed out of the deal? Well, I, I guess that's a question for our um, village board, our public works committee. I guess if uh, 
you know, if there's a desire to um, discuss that with others, um, you know, if there's a contingent of residents that want to address the board, that's, that's doable. Um, you know, we have village board meetings once a month. We have a public works committee meeting uh, once a month. Um, you know, that's, uh, it was addressed last summer um, with that neighborhood. And, you know, there were some, you know, the, the assessment back in August of this past year was, this was the ordinance and that was the way they wanted to stick with it is um, new, newly reconstructed streets would get sidewalk in single family, um, small lot areas. So, uh, but again, you can contact the trustees. I, I can get you their contact information. Uh, you can ask to speak at a village board meeting. Uh -huh. So, yep, question over here. Any you correctly, there's no charge to the residents for the sidewalk? Correct, there's no charge to the residents for the sidewalk. Right, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, the charge for us is the 1600. Also, is that ditch going to be mobile or you can run a lawnmower on it? Yeah, I mean, um, most people can take a riding lawnmower through it. Um, yeah. yeah, if you have a riding lawnmower, otherwise, yeah, you know, push more and you can take care of it too. Yeah, I mean, it should hopefully it shouldn't be full of water for very long. So, okay. question. So, two questions. One, so we'd be responsible for maintaining the ditch between the shoulder and the sidewalk? Correct. Yep, the ditch would be the residence responsibility to mow. Yep. What's, uh, Yep, so the question is what's access going to be like during construction? Uh, we, we do require contractors to maintain access. Um, we try to say at all times, but uh, there'll be times where, you know, the sanitary sewer right in front of your house is being replaced. And, um, but they will, you know, they'll, they'll knock on your door, you know, you'll get some kind of notification at least a day ahead of time saying, you know, tomorrow we're going to be digging in front of your house. Uh, make sure you have your vehicles out around the corner. Um, but you know, at night we don't uh, allow excavations to stay open. So anything that's um, placed in the ground should be covered up before they leave for the night. And, um, you know, sequentially, you'll, you can usually tell when they're coming down your street. So if you're, you know, noticing that, uh, you know, they're at Douglas and you maybe live closer to East Jelnick, you know, you should see them coming down the road and kind of know when um, your access may be restricted. Um, we do have, um, and construction projects, a full-time, uh, I guess, representative, which would be a, a member of AECOM typically. Um, so there'll be somebody out there that you can talk to, will be communicating with residents. And then um, myself, Josh, um, Dan, as I mentioned, uh, will be you know checking in on the project daily, um, you know, based on the various aspects of what's going on. So, yep. I'm a big walker, so I walk on the sidewalk Typically sidewalks, you know, especially in your area with the, like as I mentioned, the clay soils, the freeze thaw, um, they'll heave over time. Um, so the village does, you know, try to maintain if we get complaints, we'll, re you know, we'll replace sidewalk panels as needed. Um, we've had companies come through and uh, kind of shave off grind at joints so that the trip hazards are taken care of. Um, we try to assess the sidewalks. At, um, just like we do our streets, they get rated every two years. So as things pop up, um, definitely let us know. Um, the concrete work, the asphalt work on projects typically carries a two year warranty. So if something cracks, you know, that first year, second year, that's covered by the contractor as part of their, um, their, their contract with the village to put in infrastructure. Um, but I mean, realistically, concrete should last 50 plus years. Um, but that's the material itself, not necessarily the, 
what the ground underneath it does. But again, you know, we'd be removing some of the clay soils and trying to get sand and other less frost susceptible uh, material underneath it. Mention about postal service and emergency services access. Oh, yeah. So um, during the project, there would be temporary mailboxes set up. Um, and we work with the postal service to see, you know, usually at the end of a street. So my guess would be like East Jelnick, since the, this project doesn't rip up that road. Um, there'd probably be a bank of mailboxes there, and then maybe on East Everest, you know, try to split the neighborhood in two, um, where there'd be mailboxes then at the end of the road at those locations. Um, and then postal or emergency. emergency services, again, similar thing where the roads are meant to be kept open. So ambulances, fire trucks, th those, those can still get through. Uh, same thing with garbage. Um, we, we work with the haulers. So if, again, you know, a section of street is dug up for that garbage day. Um, you know, typically we tell the residents, just put it at the end of your driveway like you normally would. And the contractor will take it to whatever spot in the street that it has to be. Uh, put in so it could get picked up. Yep, question back there. Okay, so the question was the sequence of the work. Um, I guess we don't have a contractor selected, so we don't dictate their, um, their schedule, their means and methods. Uh, some will do it that way, where they will put in the sewer main, water main, storm sewer, and say, I'm done with this one street and then move to the next one. Uh, other ones will say, I've got my sewer crew here. And then they have a road crew and they'll just work through the streets where, you know, they might have multiple streets under construction at a time and move through that way. So uh, it, that's based on the particular contractor. You know, we've had it both ways. Uh, but uh, I guess we, we couldn't look at limiting them you know, phasing the project so they can only have so much open at a time too, because um, we don't want them to start and you guys have to deal with, um, I guess, construction conditions for four or five months. You know, we try to, you know, try to make it so it's as painless as possible. Um, it is destruction though, and then construction. So it, you know, there are going to be holes. It's going to be sandy. It, you know, I, I will admit it's not always the greatest pleasant conditions, but. Um, you know, it, it does get cleaned up it, it should um, make things a lot better um, long term. Any other questions? Is there anybody online that has any questions, comments? Um, so my, my information's on the screen. Um, if you ever have any other comments, questions, please email me, call me. Um, oh, got a question in the back here. How long does open this from uh, East Jelnick? I mean, so East. Yep. Yeah. So East Jelnick is in the plans. I believe it's a 2024 project. If I um, remember right. So uh, since a lot of stuff kind of flows downhill, you have to. Yeah. We're just trying to get, um, I guess, sequentially work through, and then so. Some of the work on East Everest is to upgrade the water main size. So by doing that, then you can effectively make the rest of the um, system work too. So. Is the electricity stay the same? Yep. So power, um, your internet, uh, th those companies, they'll, they'll stay as is. Um, post right next to the road now. You know. Yeah. So they might have to relocate facilities a little bit. Um, but that they will do that as part of the project as well. So, um, you know, I know some of it is through the backyard, so that stuff will be untouched. But other um, utilities that are along the road, they'll likely be relocated um, by WPS, Charter, Frontier, TDS, whoever the utility company is. Will there be a time frame of no water or stuff like that with the water main being replaced? Or? Yeah. So the. Um, Current design is to relay the water main where it exists. So when that happens, a temporary water source is set up. So prior to um, installing the new water main, a temporary water um, system will be set up, which usually uh, is a connection to your hose bib um, to where you get fed water. And then there'll be a, a pipe you know, laying on the ground that'll um, give you your water. So 
there'll be intermittent um, times where you'll be without water for maybe, you know, I'd say maybe half a day as, you know, you get connected to the temporary water. And then as you get connected to the new um, water main system, but um, it's, again, that'll be something you're notified of ahead of time too. Okay. And we try to not turn off water until about 9 a.m. So as people need to, you know, get up, shower, you have time to do that before your water is off. Will this improve the taste of the water? Um, it, it could. I don't. Um, so you know, again, the water mains have been in the ground for a while. Um, there, there's other, uh, you know, materials that have likely accumulated on the pipe walls over time. Um, you know, we also are. You know, there's another project in the village uh, looking at putting in two new wells, which have um, higher water quality than some of the existing wells. So um, that's another project that's ongoing to try to improve the, uh, some of the sidewalk money for that. Yeah. Well, the utility money and the sidewalk, they come out of two different funds. Well, bring it together. Unfortunately, we can't do that. Public Service Commission wouldn't, uh, wouldn't they would say it's not proper. So. Well, it would be the first time the government's done something a little more proper. <laughs> well, we're trying to change that. Yeah. You know, at the local level, we so, yeah, do. That's Michael says. I'm the village minister, by the way. Oh, yeah. Just, so I know it's not a random comment. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, utilities have separate, what they call enterprise funds. So the funds are segregated. Yeah. So the things down the street is a different. I, I will take anything to get rid of the sidewalk. So, okay, so look, we can go back to the sidewalk comment a little bit. And I, I understand that people have a lot of, there's a lot of different perspectives out there. We have another person over here who likes to walk. Well, you're not going to lot of people. I walk. I walk in the street. And I think, and, well, but then you bring up the issue of uh, walking on the street being a safety issue. I think, as Michael pointed out, the, the police streets ordinance. And, well, and Delnick, I think, too, is a safety issue because traffic goes like 50 miles an hour down there. But uh, these short little nicking streets, I don't see traffic as being a problem. I've never been a problem. Perspective. Is the intersection where uh, East Everett and St. Ellen on the Barbara Fine Line Quick Trip, is that going to be reworked at this stage of the game? Um, it'll still be the the right in, right out. I mean, it'll be um, reconstructed, but it's not going to, you know, that median is there. So people, you know, you as you go out, you can only turn right. You can't really turn left. It's going to, it's going to continue. So, so it'll stay as is. Yep. Okay. We'll make it so if you're coming, yeah, I mean, if you're coming up past, you know, the Holiday Inn Express there, you know, we make it so it's wide enough so if two cars are there, you can turn in. Yeah. So you will be able to turn in there. Yeah, I mean, unless we hear feedback that you don't want people to enter there, um, I guess the plan was to at least allow it so it, you know, we see people going in and out through there, so we figure we should at least make it so you can fit two cars. Um, through there without hitting each other. Um, unless they're, like, again, unless you guys, you know, would say you don't want that. And... So this fits with the grand plan of the Camp Phillips Road, uh, the, the whole um, so, so it doesn't follow the Camp Phillips quarter plan, I guess, exactly. Um, you know, that quarter plan did have Douglas Drive or Douglas Lane getting cut off and um, East, the East Monterey uh, being pulled through. Um, I can't predict at what time that may or may not ever happen. Um, so I guess instead of, you know, we're, the village isn't in a position to go and buy a bunch of houses and redo intersections. So at this time, we're just reconstructing the streets as they are. It seems like the expense of reconstructing now and then in a couple of years, have the corridor plan go through and have to rip all that and start over again. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of changes with the Camp Phillips corridor, um, with the Camp Phillips Center project um, kind of not coming to fruition. So I guess we don't necessarily envision the plan as it was presented maybe four or five years ago to be what it ends up being uh, in the future. So, um, yeah, so that plan actually does, lay the, I guess it lays a uh, foundation. I guess if, if there is a developer maybe interested in doing something, but it's not something the village is taking an ownership and go out and buy property or something like such. Um, right now, our, and our ability to do anything is, is one is going to be 
the window is going to be closed beyond that anyway by 2026 or so. If it's going to get redeveloped, it'll be sometime after that, 2031 probably. So we're talking 10 years before more else. Go back here first. Um, with the, the fall, it is projected that it's supposed to be completed hopefully in October. With uh, the fall cleanup to pick up some of yep. that stuff, if it, if construction is still going on, um, is it a contingency? Because I know Rock has a lot of weeds and all that stuff, so yep. we highly depend on. Yeah, I mean, we dealt with that this past year. You know, we deal with it every fall when a project it goes late in. You know, we still, you know, we tell people get get leaves out close to the road, and uh, you know, we'll work with you and the contractor if that is an issue at that time to make sure we still get things picked up and taken care of. You know, the, the goal is to to make sure we continue all the other services that are provided and not um, take away from that. Question back there, then? Uh, obviously, if your question is starting to go to wear and tear, uh, how about the individual sewer lines going from the houses to the road? So, the, your, yeah, so your utility lines from the road to the property line get replaced. Um, that's the part that um, I guess we deem to be the public side of your lateral. Mm -hmm. And then the private side of the lateral is from the sidewalk or the right of way line back to your house. So. As, as part of the project, the part from the mains to the property line will be replaced. So if you have issues on your own, um, I guess that'd be something if you want that replaced, you know, once a contractor is known, you can talk to them about connecting all the way back to your house or if, uh, you know, getting a separate plumber to take care of those, that would be an option too. Um, I guess we don't, uh, we haven't historically you know, group those together, but if somebody were to have an issue. Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody is interested in that, I guess, um, you know, please let us know. I'm Lauren White. I'm a trustee, by the way. So I would think if you have a property that's prone to freeze up in the wintertime, you may want to have be an arguable opportunity to have your feet in your house buried deeper. So you don't get those freeze ups. The other issue I wanted Michael to talk about is the DNR has stuck their finger in this project too and had some additional costs to the village because the DNR has some requirements. Would you explain those, Michael? Sure. So um, I know one of the letters I think I sent you in December was about the uh, the mini excavator in the neighborhood digging test pits. Uh, that was to determine the infiltration rates of the soils. So um, the stormwater requirements uh, from the Department of Natural Resources is a lot more stringent than it's been in the past. So um, I guess that's another reason why it's ditches still. It's not um, the curb and gutter because the water um, has to uh, flow through the vegetated areas in order to uh, treat it. Um, so any uh, you know oils or other metals, materials that may be uh, on the roadway that uh, gets washed out. Um, I guess the, the theory is the grass kind of filters that out before it gets into the storm piping and into the um, drainage system and it, you know, our rivers lake. So, um, so I guess if anybody had that question, that's the, that's the reason for having the ditches is it's a DNR requirement. And then the, the test pits was to see if it is also necessary to infiltrate the water or not. So as uh, as we found out, um, there's not a whole lot of water that infiltrates into the ground. Um, so even though we told them that, they still wanted proof that it didn't um, happen that way. So that was the reason for the extra um, soil analysis uh, later that, you know, November, December this year. Yeah, so the, the sand layer, um, you know, it'll allow water to get through that topsoil. And then um, I still, with having the storm sewer everywhere, well, maybe not everywhere, but in the ditches and the captions, um, it'll help the water go somewhere. So everything will be sloped that way. So it shouldn't just sit in the side of the road. You know, there's spots in you know, probably July that still are wet because uh, the water doesn't go anywhere. Anyone else? 
So as I mentioned on the tables, there are larger plots that um, one shows the storm sewer layout, one shows the driveway approaches and um, kind of the, the trees that um, look to be likely to be uh, cut as part of the project. So, um, and then I get, again, um, please sign in if you haven't already. So we just kind of know who's here. During the project, I like to have a, uh, an email list, try to give a weekly update to everybody. It's a lot harder to do that via mail. So I mean, we do still mail updates, but um, I send out a weekly email. I just kind of let people know where things are at and how things are going. Um, so, and then again, there's comment sheets there. So if you have another specific comment uh, that maybe you didn't want to ask in front of everybody else or you know, take it home with you, something comes up, you can write it down, drop it back off at the office. Or again, call, email, <laughs> take care of what you have. But, um, yep, my business card's over there too. So, is there anybody online that has any questions? Any hands up? Is, chat? is there any way we can get any kind of maps before this all starts? Yeah, I guess what kind of map are you like a, the, yeah, I guess if you email me and let me know what you want or uh, tell me, you know, stop by, we can definitely give you a, a layout of what it looks like around your um, your property. Well, how about when Mike sent out those letters, how about sending it all to the property people that own all these where lines are going to move, streets are going to move, trees are going to move, and show us the lines so we have an idea. Um, just want to know if once the contractor has hired them, they follow their sequence of work and schedule. Yeah, I mean, so, so that's what I'm wondering. So that's Shelly, that's you, right? Um, um, yeah. Of course, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I guess the. I guess I speak for our neighborhood, and yeah. everybody wants to know I got a proposal of a map. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if it was going to be or not to be, but sure. now I would like to speak for a certain neighbors. If when you sent out that letter, which we all appreciated a lot, if we could figure out where the lines would actually be, because people are starting to worry about their trees, driveways, ditches, and it's not me. I'm just speaking Yep. for the neighborhood that I'm talking about. Sure. I mean, we, we do have the maps of somebody, I guess the like, logistically, yes, I could do that. I could send a map of, to everybody with um, kind of outlining what their, what their specific property line is. Um, I, I guess the other thing would be if, you want, if somebody wants to stop by the village hall, we'll have the plans available um, to yes. go over. Uh, I will be uploading information to the website as well. So, well, Mike, we can't even pay a bill at the village hall because it's all locked up. Yeah. So if you could just like scan it and uh, maybe you could just send the letter, it would be a lot easier. You sure. can't pay a watch bill in person. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we put it on the website, does that work? You know, everybody can view the plans that way. Or I guess if there's certain I people think that, everybody would I Mike, I'm sorry, but I think everybody would appreciate a letter. Okay. And just a copy because there's a lot of people in the neighborhood that just can't get that. Sure. Okay. Or a lot of people that want to call me and ask me and you know me, I have my own opinion and I just want it to come from you all. Okay. All right, yeah, we'll see what we can do in the next um, week or so here. That's pretty good. No yeah, be some cutting and pasting. Go ahead. Is this work going to do anything to drive the back? Oh, yes. I have a question over here. Yeah, maybe <laughs> mail. Some mail. That's how email is there. Yep. From the other archive, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, no, and I, like I said, I, I do, you know, during the project, I, there is a physical letter that's sent out, but. Um, yeah. The email list gets things out quicker. It does, but 
some people don't like that. Correct. Yeah. So so I do both, but I'm just saying that the email system seems to, you know, somebody's got a question today, they you know, they get updated today versus a question today gets answered three days from now. So um, both do get sent out. Other questions? Okay. I just got one thing to say to the village. Thank you for plowing our roads. And they are awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. You didn't do it yourself. I know. I'll let the guys know. Go ahead, Greg. Yes. So like uh the friends of like on uh Ray G at a corner of the whole thing. Similar issue with the light school power. Um, that's where a lot of kids sure. are for the buses. Um, overall, when the project is done, is there like a realignment for the lighting? Is there going to be more lighting? Is it going to be the same? Are they going to replace yeah. like the, the lighting that is under there is much more brighter? Sure. Yeah, W yeah, WPS owns those lights. Um if, if there's an issue, you said Randy J and East Jelnick. Well on the other side, yeah, because it was a problem where they fixed it yeah. over um, on us. Okay. But on um, East Jelinek. Sure. I know when before COVID, yeah, driving and John said winter and all that stuff. It's hard to see the kids. It's it's called gallery for the bus. Yeah. And the uh, the light will you know shine all the time just go off. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can contact WPS about that, you know, today, tomorrow, and they should have somebody out there to fix it relatively soon. Um, but then, as far as the rest, uh, if there is an intersection that doesn't have a light, we'll typically add one as part of the project. Otherwise, um, lights typically are just at the intersection in residential areas. Mike. Yep. Uh, all the lots on. Uh... Randy J to the east are all pretty wet in the backyards. Is that going to help address any of that at all? Um, are they wet because of, um, I guess, some point discharges? No, in spring they're quite buggy. Yeah. Um, I guess part of it, uh, you know, we should be capturing more water from the streets um, and upstream in the storm sewer, so there should be less, you know, maybe starting from Douglas and getting into the backyards. So some of that should be alleviated. Um, I guess the project doesn't include anything in the in the backyards necessarily though. Okay. So, um, there might be some, but I can't guarantee there will be. Put your boots on. <laughs> You're welcome to come over anytime this spring and we'll show you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Hip, hip waiters. <laughs> yep. Did I hear another question from someone? Yeah. No? Okay. Anybody else? I guess one question they had was what part of the website will the information be accessible? Okay. Yeah, so I'll look at um I'll I'll send out a letter. Um Kind of as a follow up from this meeting, uh, we'll have information um, as far as the web address um, where, where we'll be uploading information for the project. And um, so um, I'll, I'll try to get that up, you know, kind of middle of next week. So hopefully everybody has it by the end of next week. You put it in one spot instead of dispersed among the website. Correct. Yeah, it'll be under the public works um, page um, for street projects. Anybody else? I guess if nobody else has any questions um, right now, um, those of you here in person, if you still want to go look at the, the maps that we have here, um, anybody who's online, if you want to look at the larger prints that we do have, um, I, I guess. Get a, get a hold of me. Um, let me know if you want to stop by the village. Uh, we, we can do that. We can um, look at them together. Uh, so, uh, yes. So, 
does an appointment have to be made to get in the front doors at the Western Village? An appointment isn't necessarily required, but to guarantee that I'm in attendance or somebody is there, um, you know, we have meetings and other things where I'm out of the building at times. So I guess I, I, I prefer a meeting so somebody doesn't come there, shows up and nobody's there to answer their questions. So. Okay, well, thank you. Um, and if you have any other questions, please let us know. Thank you, Michael. Um, thank you. Do you want? Yeah. 